All right, welcome back everybody. Now we want to start writing our uh, pipeline configuration, all right, for the monorepo so that we can see exactly um, how it works, okay? So we're going to write all of these things, okay? Uh, and then, of course, we are going to bring some knowledge from, you know, the previous um, deployment that we've done, all right, to just basically speed up all right things here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to just copy a few things from the previous, all right, application. So I'm going to come here, right here, all right. I'm going to just copy this particular workflow. I mean, we want to just maintain that, that uh, be right. Everything should, you know, be triggered when the pipeline is main. And of course, if there's any kind of magic request event, then that should also, all right, be triggered. Okay. So we're going to copy that, all right, from that place, actually. Okay. Now, another thing that I can also copy here is basically this variable. Uh, I think that will be useful, but of course, um, so let's see how to basically do that. So I'm going to come here, all right, and then I'm going to drop the variables all right here. But of course, I'm not going to be needing all of these uh, variables, right? I just need two, all right, particular all right variables. So here, I'm going to call this one, all right, I'm going to call this one server, all right, I underscore IP. And then I'm going to call this one, um, you know, application endpoint, right? So app underscore end UINT point, all right? Now I'm going to be using my, you know, the same development server that we are using, okay? So if I come here, I'm still going to be using the same development server, right? I mean, we can just clear out whatever it is that we have here and basically just reuse that server, okay? I mean, let's just quickly do that. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to just say Docker, all right, compose, uh, and then I'm going to say down, right? I mean, if you look at this particular location, if you do ls, the Docker compose file is actually here. So if I say Docker compose, all right, down, I mean, that should stop and delete all the containers, right? Okay, so we have some variables that we defined and all of that, and those variables are actually... Um, not here, okay? So it's not going to work because we have to set those variables. Now, you know that those variables are actually coming from the pipeline, okay? So and we don't have those variables in this environment, so that is not going to work all right as we expect. So, but of course, let's do Docker PS. So we can just stop them manually, right? Without doing, you know, without using the Docker Compose all right file. So here, I'm just going to say Docker stop all right, so let's just grab the container ID. I mean, it is good that we're playing the environment now so that by the time we do our deployment, we don't just, oops, sorry, so that we don't just forget that, you know, we've not, you know, cleared out everything to avoid any kind of, you know, error, okay? So paste that, copy these as well, all right, and then you have to drop that here, and then we basically stop all of those containers, and then I'm gonna just recall the same command and here, I'm just basically going to remove, all right, all of those containers, right? So I'm going to say rm, docker rm to delete all the containers. So now if I do docker ps, I don't have anything, of course. And then docker ps, I think a, I don't have any, all right, stopped, all right, containers. So the next thing I can do here is to say docker system, all right, prune. And then I think AF basically to just clear out whatever images, whatever network, whatever, whatever it is that I have, right? That I'm not using, right? That I'm not utilizing as far as Docker is concerned. Then it should basically just prune the system and then, of course, you know, free me, uh, free some space, actually. So you can see here that it deleted all the networks that I showed us in the last video, right? It deleted all the networks and then all the images were also cleared out. So now if I do Docker images, I basically don't have any images again. And if I do Docker PS, I don't have anything. And if I do Docker, all right, network LS, okay, I basically don't have any, all right, networks. I mean, these are just default networks that was created when you install Docker, all right, for the first time. So let's clear the screen. I mean, our environment is prepared, so we can go ahead and continue with, all right, the pipeline configuration all right, that we are working on. So I'm going to change this back to 3000 because we are only going to be accessing a single endpoint and then we're going to use that endpoint to communicate, all right, with other, um, you know, backend services, right? So we're not communicating with other backend services, but basically going to communicate through those backend services, all right, from the front end service. So we only need a single, all right, endpoint for that, right? So the next thing we need to do here is to define our stages, right? So we need to define stages. And of course, we're going to be listing out our stages. So we have the build stage, 
All right. And then we're also going to be having the deploy stage. So these are the two stages technically that we're also going to have. Right. So we don't need more than two stages. We need to build and we need to deploy. All right. So that is basically the two stages that we're going to have right here. Now, the next thing you need to do here is basically to start the right, you know, to start configuring your jobs. Right. Now, in the last video, we learned about, all right, using extend. And of course, we said if you want to use extend, you basically have to hide your job using the dots and then the name of the job. And then you can extend that job, all right, within your pipeline, right? So that is exactly what we're going to be doing right here. So dot build. Okay, so basically we want to have one job and then we can extend that job, all right, using the extend keyword without having to duplicate, all right, the pipeline code, all right, for each of the jobs that we want to, all right, have. Because, I mean, we need to build a front-end service, we need to build the product service, we need to build the shopping cart service, right? And if you're going to use the normal way, that means we're going to have, all right, build for front-end, build for product, and build for shopping cart with the same, all right, configuration. And of course, that's not what we want to do, given that we've learned how to basically use the extend keyword to help us manage, all right, that code, you know, duplication situation. So here, I'm going to say this one belongs to the stage, all right, build. I mean, it belongs to stage build. And of course, don't forget your tags basically to say that you're going to be using the Docker, all right, runner that we have configured, all right, already. But of course, there's something I will show us later. But for now, the tag for that runner is Docker, right? So that means we're saying that we are going to use our own runner to basically execute this job, all right? So now, the next thing here that we need to do, all right, the next thing that we need to do here is to basically... Um, all right, so we need to build this application, right? We need to build it as a Docker image, all right, and then push that into, all right, our, you know, environment, okay? So the next thing we're going to do here is to basically configure what you call a variable. Now, in the last video, we saw, all right, how to do all of this, right? I mean, if you look at that particular, all right, space, we did something like this, right? So we actually used, you know, when we did the deploy, we actually used variables and then we basically passed all of these variables in by the time we extended, all right, that particular build, okay? So that is the same thing that we're also doing at this point, all right, in time, okay? So here I'm going to configure a variable, but of course I just need a, only just one variable is what I need here, right? I just need one variable, all right, here. And the variable is going to be micro, all right, underscore service, okay? So micro underscore service. And then, of course, that is going to be the variable that I need. And, of course, that's the only variable that we want. So now here, we have to now configure our before script. Okay, so before, all right, underscore script. Okay, so let's configure that. So before script. Now, we have three folders. So there's the front end folder, there's the product folder, and there's the shopping cart, all right, folder right here. Okay. Now, here, we cannot say, because, I mean, before we can build out of these applications, we have to do, or we have to CD, or I change directory into each of the folders, and then build using the Docker image that you have, all right, inside of them, okay? So, the what we can do, actually, is to, all right, use this particular variable. So, this microservice variable is what we want to use to identify, all right, each of the service. Okay, so the front end, the product, and the shopping cart. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say dollar and then micro underscore service. Okay, now because I mean this is a variable, right? So that means I'm still have to, I will still have, all right, to pass in the value. Okay, at the end of the day, right? So we have to say CD, all right, micro service. And then don't forget also that we are also getting the version from the or we're getting the version from the package adjacent. So this is the version of the, all right, you know, that we're picking up. So we're picking up 1.0 F. I mean, I just added F just to basically show us, you know, that this is the front end service, right? It can be anything actually. So we're getting the version, all right, from here. So we are parameterizing, all right, the version as well. So don't forget that. That's the same thing we did. So here I'm going to say APK add. And then, of course, you have your no, all right, catch. I mean, basically, you're not storing that permanently. So anytime the build runs, all right, it's going to execute, all right, this thing particularly. So here, basically, to print out uh, the JQ version, just to be sure that the JQ was installed. And then here, in fact, I can actually come here to copy, you know, all the things that I have here without having to just, you know, redo, 
all of those things again, right? But of course, so let's do it one by one. I mean, we're learning, okay? So here, I'm going to say export. All right, so what are we exporting? So we are exporting the app version. Remember, we did that in the last, you know, in the last project. So app version equals to, all right, so dollar sign to do some command substitution there. So we're going to say cut. All right, so cut. So basically, we're looking into the package adjacent, all right, to pick up the version, all right, that we need, actually. So here, we're going to now say JQ to basically look into the package adjacent, all right, and read, okay, anywhere you can find anything that has to do with version, okay? So read that and then give us, all right, whatever you can find in that particular line. So anywhere you can find version, whatever the value of version is, is what we want to, all right, get. So again, so we come here, all right, we export, Okay, so export again, and then here we're exporting version. All right, and then we say version equals, all right, to app underscore version. Okay, so it's equal to app underscore version. Of course, don't forget your, you know, your CI pipeline, right? We're actually using that, the CI pipeline, all right, ID, okay? Okay, so we're using that. So, I mean, it's not just going to be 1.0F, but of course, it should also be dot the pipeline, all right, ID as well. So the next thing we need to do here, of course, we have to we have to do a lot of exports, right? So export, I mean, we, we need to make those variables available within, all right, the build job, all right, so that it can be used, all right, and be made available. So image underscore name, so we need to export the image name as well. And that is going to be equal, all right, to this. So we're going to use this. So we're going to say CI underscore registry. Now, this is actually something that we've done all right previously. I mean, if you followed us up to this point, this should not be uh, something that all right that you're confused about all right again. We already talked about this predefined variables, all right, and whatever it is that we're doing here. So here we want this to have all right a particular name. So we can say micro all right service, or we can say slash all right, and then dollar sign, and then we can just say micro underscore service right i mean so that way it just basically going to pick whatever value we pass in into the microservice is what this is going to all right give to us right so that is what this will give to us okay so now the next thing we need to do is to use the echo command to basically store or write the version into a text file that we're going to make available by using the artifact or right keyword okay so here i'm going to say version all right, version, all right, just basically pass that into, all right, version.txt, right? So that's what we want to do. So we're saving that into, all right, a, you know, a file, right? So basically save version, all right, to a file. So we can put a comment here, actually. So we can say save, all right, version to a file, okay? So I put in a comment like that. Now that we have done all of the before script, we've exported all the, you know, the necessary variables, or right, we've echoed it out, all right, into a text file, all right, so the next thing we need to do now is to configure the script, all right, session. So what script do we want to run, all right, after all of this, okay? So here, the script we want to run is basically to just, you know, first of all, we need to log in into... Uh, you know, the container registry. Don't forget, we're using the GitLab CI CD container registry. All right, so we have to authenticate with our registry first of all, all right, before we can build and push, all right, images into, all right, that registry, okay? So echo, we want to make sure that we are connecting securely, okay? And that's what we're using this approach. In the last, all right, you know, the project that we did before this one, we, we, did, we didn't use any kind of echo, but this time around, we want to use something different to authenticate, all right, or basically a different method, right? Let me not say something different, right? It is basically a different method that we want to use to authenticate, all right, with uh, the container registry of the GitLab CI CD pipeline. So here, so I'm going to say CI, all right, underscore registry. Remember, this is the same thing that we used to authenticate. We actually just got, uh, you know, a basically a registry password. Okay, that's one of the predefined variables that we can use. And then we can, we're going to come here and say Docker login, all right, I think you. So what's the username? We're going to use a predefined variable for that as well. I mean, we've done this, all right, in the last project. So these are not new things, all right, at all. So if you've not watched all of those videos that we've done in the past, I really, really encourage you to go, all right, watch those videos so that you can understand exactly what we're doing, all right, in this place, okay? 
so that I mean you're not confused as to where, where, are we, where are we getting all those variables from. Is that okay? So here I'm now going to say password. All right, I've in STDIN. I mean, the password should come in as a standard input, okay, just to basically to protect all right the password, right? So that'll be as a standard input. And then I'm going to now come here and say, all right, I mean, I have to authenticate to a registry. So CI underscore rare or registry. So I mean, I'm authenticating to a registry. So the login, all right, the username and the password, all right, and then the registry that I want to authenticate, all right, into, okay? So I specify that. So the next thing we need to now do is to basically now say Docker, all right, build. So we're building the Docker image, I think T. So we're tagging that with, all right, the image name. So this one will be what? Image underscore name. So the image name, which is this one right here, we've expected that already. So that'll be image name and then column what? So that'll be what? Column version. Right, I mean, the version has already been echoed into this file, and the reason why we echoed into this file is to make it available. All right, is to make it available. All right, for other jobs. All right, that we need that particular. All right, file. remember, we are extending this build, so this build is actually hidden, but we're going to be extending it for product, for shopping cart, and even for front end as well. So that's why we are putting everything here, and then for all of these other jobs for the front end, product, and shopping cart, we basically will expand. All right, that. So that's why we're taking this approach that we're thinking here. So don't forget your dots. I mean, you have to specify that the, all right, that the, you know, the Docker file is right in that same location. Don't forget we're doing CD here. So basically we're working inside of whatever name that we put. So whatever name we put must match either of these names. So it has to be front end product or shopping cart, right? That has to match. So here, the next thing is to say Docker, all right, push. And then of course, what are we pushing? So we're pushing image underscore name, all right, column, okay, so the same version actually. So that's what we're pushing, all right, here. And the last thing we need to do is to configure the artifact. I mean, that is gonna help us store, all right, artifact. So that is gonna help us to store, all right, the version.txt, all right, that we are trying to make available, all right, to other jobs, right? So I'm gonna come here and say path, right? And then, so the path is going to be, all right, so microservice again, because I mean, the version is going to be different for each of the microservices. So the version for the front end is going to be different. The version for product is going to be different. And the version for shop, shopping cart is going to be different. So we're going to use, all right, dollar microservice, okay, slash version dot txt. So basically what we're saying here is that for each of the services that we're trying to build, all right, it should save the version dot txt for each of these um, services. So here we're already parameterizing, right? Because here we define a variable called microservice. So by the time we extend this particular job, we're not going to pass in that variable. So front end, product, and shopping cart. Okay, that's what we're doing. And here we're doing CD into that. I mean, like I said, this particular microservice value must correspond to either of these names. So it has to be front end, product, or, all right, shopping cart. So we're done. All right, we're done with this now. So the next thing is to extend all right, this particular build job, right? So in the next video, we are going to see quickly how to extend this particular build job, all right? And of course, for all of the services, so for front-end, for product, and for shopping cart, we're going to see that, all right, in the next, all right, video. So thank you so much, and I'll see you, all right, in the next one.